hello again um happy summer <laughs> it's finally here in finland as well and i've been reluctant to actually turn on my laptop so i haven't um edited or recorded anything for about one and a half weeks i do apologize but i just need to have break from the laptop life and do something else instead of just uh, working on my laptop. I might actually take the, uh, one more week later on and not going to be that much doing on it these few weeks but yeah it's like I had to do it now because I want to share with you what 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 is going on in my growth space and all the other stuff so without further ado uh let's get on with it so first of all um let's look at all the newcomers and hold on a second and i'll get you closer so these are the s small ones they still can fit into this one shelf i need to actually figure out the cords and stuff because they are not in good position now but for the time being that'll do so this is the Zengmin predator it dries out quite quickly so i need to water it quite often and this is the samura blue as you can see they have gained some color this usually uh, dries out really fast so I tend to water it one or twice per week same as with the Violacea indigo blue and so this is one of the first uh, new ones which is the trainee it seems to have some sort of issues with its leaves but I haven't seen any pests on it at least and I did uh, give it um, a insecticidal spray before I got it into my my um, shelf but anyway I, I already have thrips somewhere here lurking all the time so that's normal and then there is the Phalaenopsis lutemaniana uh, cerulea the problem with this one was that I did record the reporting for this uh, but I wasn't able to actually hold on to actually uh, it was corrupted so yeah but it's like in this sort of moss tries out in a week so that's quite fine Mm, this is the Hieroglyphica, dries out in a week, that's fine as well. Um, that one stays uh, wet more than a week, but on the other hand it's so small, just seedlings in one pot, so I don't want it to actually dry too fast. Um, because of my schedules during the day, I I do need to get them stay a moist longer period of time. And when I'm using sphagnum moss, even though they dry up completely, it's um, it's not end of the world because uh, it does good for them every now and once in a while to actually dry too much. But yeah, that works for me in my environment. This one, uh, it's funny how um, it doesn't dry out that fast. Oh, sorry, you were way too high. Okay, now you can actually see what I'm talking about. So this is the Pulcra, dark red. And it doesn't dry out that fast, but I usually tend to take it off from the cover pot at one point to get let it breathe. And then it's dried again. So it's not. it's like a balance with this one. I know it's going to make new roots at some point, so if 
I change it into more airy mix, I might have issues in future with this one. Uh, Leilia purpurata. It's starting new roots there, as you can see, a little bit darken. It dries out quite quickly, does well with this media. Happy with its progress. And this one is Ludemaniana Dark. Okay, let's go lower. So it's growing that new... Mm, growing new roots. So that's my Ludemaniana. This is my Doiana Aurea, the smaller one. And I'm keeping it quite moist because it's so small. It's getting a little bit tinge because of the light. I put a little layer of bark there because it was so high up. And yeah, let's move on. So this is the after dark. And there is some sort of eye there and it's growing new roots like all around it. So I can see new root tips coming up. I've been spraying a little bit down here to keep it uh, that moist environment. I think it's doing fine. And I'm not yet actually watering it because it's just making the new roots. And that's that eye, I don't know, it's like new um, preparing for new pseudobulb. And yeah, let's continue with this one. Hold on. Media a bit for this one in order to actually have a little bit. There is the new roots. That's that already dried up earlier. So there is new roots was going down there. So that's not an issue. But it was staying too moist for too long, so I had to switch it into mm, a little bit more bark. So I just pull pull it out, put a little bit bark in the mix, and then put it down. So I didn't disturb it that much, so that's quite okay. And this is my bronze maiden growing down new leaf, making new roots. Nothing special. And this is the smaller piece of that Lodemaniana dark. <laughs> it's growing as well. Don't see any roots yet, but it's doing quite fine in there. And this is the Logi Jesse Marisa. Um, that repotting was well adjusted. As you can see, there is no roots coming in. Doing just fine. And there is the the Wiana. So this one is still in the same pot as it came in. And this is the newest growth. It's already... Oh, sorry, you're not focused. It's already splitting up. I'm guessing it's still going to be growing. And as you can see, it's quite big. I'm waiting for the new roots so I'm able to actually repot it into a bigger pot. Now I need to water it twice a day. <laughs> no, twice, no, uh, once a day. So I prefer having a little bit longer period of, of uh, wetness. And let's see how it actually takes into my wetness thingies because it's uh, famous of needing dry cycle. But yeah, uh, that's the Z Super Zebra. It's growing new leaf, doing fine, like normally. And this one I really need to repot soon because it dries out within a day or two. So uh, that's on for the next one. And then hold. So I moved my... What were you? Bovringiana red, Catlia here if i can get the um yeah i think it's doing just fine um there is new roots coming in if you can see something actually i didn't even show you 
Uh, so yeah, that's the newest growth. I had to move it here because it was getting so tall. Mm. There's the new one. I think that one was... Hold on, I'll check. Amethystoclossa Flamea. So that's there. And that one, I think... Ooh, was that one the... This one was the village chief Armani Red Dragon. I have the green dragon and now I have red. <laughs> and... Cadillac Perusivaliana, and it's doing quite nicely, growing that new growth there, if I can actually focus with my camera, so you can actually see something. Okay, and that has that new growth there. And this is the oh, Arantiaca um, with the spotted uh, flowers. And it's growing this new ro growth here. And this one, um, that's my my sweet sugar. It actually almost split on that side because that's so huge pseudobulb. It's like size of a potato or something, growing really well. And this one, I no ID. Um, what is was Brasia? And the pseudobulb is huge. You cannot see it's from here, but it's huge. And this spike is up there. I need to keep up with it and see if it's going to do something silly and move it. Uh, that one, I'm giving it a next growth because I did report it last time. If it's going to stay this small, uh, it's it doesn't have place in my uh, environment. I'm sorry, and this one started to bloom. I'm going to make you a spotlight video about that. So that's the one which is blooming there. Okay, Ooh, moving on. So these ones are here. I I need to uh, get them out, but I cannot keep them where my gyra kiku is because these are. Well, they are way too sensitive for the light that my Jaira Kiko seems to be quite happy with. As you can see, my beautiful uh, Rinkar Stylist Gigantia. I'm not sure was this the red spot or peach. Anyway, um, it's growing new roots, so I'm really happy with that. I think I'm going. To, I'm on the way of recovering, and we are moving up next. And I almost forgot these ones. Um, so as you can see, this is growing new roots there. So this is the Millennium Magic Witchcraft. And it's growing, not as big as the After Dark. And then there is the Mar Marie Cross with Tetraspice C1 and doing lovely growing new, new leaf. And that's about it. Okay, now we can move higher. Hold on a second. So <laughs> here ha are my two warm growing Paphia bedellums, which are not directly underneath the light. I don't know how many leaves they are going to grow, but this is growing a new one there. If I can show you there. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. And that one grew this one. Not sure if it's going to grow even more. Um, yeah, but it's doing nice after the report no issues. Uh, that one actually had two spikes. It can stay here. And if I have room somewhere else, it can stay until I don't have room. Because it's uh, not a healthy plant. I've been growing now, I think, four to five years. Phalaenopsis. And I've been killing so many that I do know when I've done something wrong. So, yeah. And this one, <laughs> I made a little boo-boo. If you can see, uh, there is missing some leaves. And I'm going to show you they are here. Save them for you. 
you're welcome. <laughs> so this is what happens when you forget your plants outside um, on the light and don't bring them in uh, before it like heats up the leaves too much. So the good news is my light on my south facing windowsill outside is uh, strong enough that my Jairakiko gets tinged but not uh, burned. Ooh, sorry about that. That was really um, sudden, but we have new janitor services and I could hear something uh, flying onto my wall at the front of my my porch and I was sure that they were like um, getting rid of my, all my hostas or something thinking they are some sort of weed so I had to go and check but they are okay so yeah uh, the this housing yeah we we just changed the janitor so yeah had to check no worries no hostas were harmed at this point but yeah so uh i was saying i think i was talking about uh the light level so uh my spectabula cannot stand that light level at least that soon that much so that's why i'm getting that shade cloth which is going to be 40 percent so i'm going to put it onto my windowsill like a curtain outside i have this uh supports that they are not like it the shade netting is not standing on the plants it's a little bit further out it's it tells me a lot okay moving on flapping too much uh so this is my dendrobium nobile um as you can see it's finished off the with this new growth and it's a little bit bigger than the other one there is new roots coming in i'm going to take it out um three degrees or 32 degrees celsius so it's going to get like the heat and bright shade so it's not going to i'm going to mimic the summer and then when i bring it in i'm going to keep it inside this room because it's still a seedling so i'm helping it to actually get acclimatized and then when it's bigger i can actually put it into the cooler room underneath my sauna <laughs> which is really cold and this one as you can see it's doing roots i'm really scared of these brassia roots because honestly um yeah the other one i couldn't show you but the roots are so hu huge that i'm not sure i have to break the pot to take them out because there is so many of them and this one is also like growing all all around up here let me just show you if I can. As you can see, it's just crazy how these grow. It has one, two, I think three, maybe fourth coming. Uh, new growth, uh, growth directions. I'm going to let them grow inside this pot, even though it's like chucking out roots. So when these new growths are starting to grow new roots, growth roots, yeah so i'm going to put it up into a bigger pot or probably going to have 12 centimeters pot next it's just way too big i'm good with brassias for some odd reason so um, this is the catalatonia uh, red rum cross with arizona and it's growing new growth there not sure what, why it's growing that small the new growths need to see but yeah if it's not going to do something soon i need to figure out what's its issue and my uh tenebrosas new growth is sticking up from there it's finally started growing and it's growing crazy new roots again like every Everything in here is growing crazy roots. I think I need to give this a flush. Now it's the flushing time, so I'm not giving them any feed. Um, yeah, I'm going to put it aside, but yeah, growing crude, great, no issues. 
uh, coming up with update with my purpurata, so not going to dwell on them. This one, this is my thrip magnet. Don't know why. I had it for a month in isolation. Did the treatment a couple of times and I'm hoping now that I got rid of them. I haven't seen anything. But they can be somewhere hidden and they come out next winter or so. So I have to keep an eye on them. I actually burned these leaves as well. So that's why they are cut. They started uh, growing black. So I, I decided it was better to cut them off and um, yeah instead of having some issues haven't uh, flowered this yet don't know when it's going to but this is the Catalicia CMG CM Jade e Avo so that's the one I like it it's green I like my greens these I can actually throw off now but just wanted to show you them um this is the bear king um, it's doing quite well my yeah the roots are okay i think i need to water it today and um, this is my doiana aurea and let's see so that root is okay and um, the other one is growing there as you can see somehow with all the re reflections and um, I haven't seen any other, I'm not waiting for, but that's odd. It's growing second leaf. <laughs> so is it by leaf uh, or one leaf? If it's uh, one leaf, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that it's really happy now. So I'm happy as well. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, and I still, uh, sorry, but this is not orchid, but I, I needed to show you. I started taking better care of my my um, philodendron, Brazilian, uh, Brazilian philodendron, or what, what was the name? Anyway, it's now growing big, bigger leaves, so I'm good plant parent now. And let's move up. There isn't that much to, to see. That one is growing. That one has spike. That was one of those who was full to have spike. I think I let my my um, Drosiras to get to dry. I'm hoping I'm able to actually revive them. That was my mistake. I'm really bad plant parent now because I don't know. I just I just got them at, during the last months of work and because they were up here higher so I, I think I need to move them lower so I'm actually following them up and not killing them because these are my own seedlings I grew them myself but yeah let's move on this is Bellina it got back after taking time outside um, it's in a junk gear mix Oh, I think I did reporting video on this. Might actually post it. Uh, it's uh, doing well. This is 15 centimeter spot. It was huge, the root system, I mean. Um, this is the Japonica Mandopsis. Growing this new leaf, growing that new root really slow. And this thing, uh, Rinka Stylist. Gigantia red spots, so the lower one was peach. Look at that leaf. I mean, that's huge, and this one is going to be the same. And yeah, it's growing really well for me. I think I've got it with this one. This one is water growing, no new leaves, nothing uh, bulging out. This one, um, growing its new leaf, I think I'm taking this out because it's now over 15 degrees Celsius outside during the evenings. And it's uh, really in my, like, like look at those roots, they are crazy. But yeah, uh, it's now 
it's so humid there it's um during the daytime it's 50 percent and during the night time it goes up to 70 percent so i think it would benefit from staying there and it gets so hot so it might actually enjoy it and my phalaenopsis white one which i saved from the flower shop discount section is doing great the roots are amazing like you can see there cannot say, uh, take it off because of the blooms but yeah this is the first one i like it and there's my philadelphia Phalaenopsis philadelphia it's losing one leaf i think it's because it's uh, actually flowered this is the second flowering for in within half a year for this one because of the colder spill we had so mm, yeah i think it has like four leaves and that fifth one is going away and it's growing quite nice root system i had to report it in between this time so that's other reason why i think it was had to lose that leaf but yeah it's crossed between shilleriana and stuartiana really beautiful blooms mildly fragrant okay let's see this is the tricolor vanda it's growing its new root up there um yeah it's i think i need to not yet not yet water it oh how about you so this is my yeah the roots are doing fine so this is the Ancrecum leonis growing that new leaf nothing special this one this is the yellow one which i broke the spike before it bloomed hoping this one is going to bloom this fall and this one has grown this but i cannot see any any promises of spike so yeah still don't know what it is let's see that's a mystery okay going down next so among these ones here is my uh what was it mm, saccharic wax so yeah that was it and um, it's here i just blow some air every now and then there inside to keep it moist i can show you how it looks like now i take it off and dunk it into water i put it like upside down so the root system can get dry in between the now and then and so and uh, it gets foliar feed while it's in the bucket so hold on a sec i'll open this up so here it is mm. The leaves are still a little bit wrinkly, but not as much as it used to be, as you can see. So the old, older ones are not looking that great, but this one, well, not that bad. And don't fall. I have that new, new growth there. So I'm hoping it's going to survive. I barely have any roots it's i'm not even sure are those live but keeping them on in in case something is getting soaked in but yeah that's there was uh signs of snail bites if you see there is like this hollow uh in this behind the, in this bulb which is actually this one oh wait so this if you look at that now you can actually see something so there is this hollow thing so i think there has been some snails munching away everything about them so so this is my saccharic wax and it's not focusing i'm going to go and take care of it and let's see am i able to actually get it to survive it should because it has that many pseudobulbs but I don't know. Let's see next year. <laughs> yeah, if it's still alive around mm, September, I guess I'm good with it and I can actually 
participate in care collapse if you have oh by the way if you know, have some of these pla uh, plants or orchids which i'm showing here and you want to have care collab with me i'm willing to actually do that because most of them i've been growing quite a long time but yeah so this was my indoors and i'm going to show you the other places and outside for a while Hold on. so i'd made some changes i moved this um oh my gosh now i don't remember what it is I really don't, I cannot come up with what it's in English now. I'm only remembering it in Finnish. I'll post somewhere there what I meant. But I have brought out my Dendrobium nobile. This is the species one. And it's growing new roots there. And this is a little bit more shaded because the cover is doubled as the door is open during the hottest time of the year. I just brought this... Um, oh, I have lost the tag, so this is sugar, sweet sugar, yes. Oncidium sweet sugar here. And that's why it's a little bit shaded. And here are my... I have to actually spec these in case there is some sort of... Or is it an old one? But this um, Cymbidium, there is one Cymbidium there, there is the Nobile type, and here is my Phragmapedium Hanebobov. So that's there. Mm, looking quite kind of good. There is two new growths there. The temperature goes over 35 sometimes and here is one of my antelope type getting blasted i brought my oh, what was that one oh gosh i'm just forgetting all of these things hold on so this is the rinka stylus gigantia peach so, so i brought it outside this is my chinese symbidium it's here little bit shaded. This is my Catlia. What are you? Bovering Gianna Red. Brought it out. So it's this sort of, it's southern facing window and, well, not the window, it's southern facing wall. So this is really hot. And the sun, I, I believe, is going to be good enough for these to actually get some energy to survive from, through the winter. So there is my Spectabilae, and Spectabilae cross with Lacrophyllum, and that's my only Talumnia, and it's enjoying its life. As you can see, it has quite good, good root system already. Need to check what's going on there, but yeah. Uh, and then we are going to move on to my windowsill. Okay, so this is my gyro kiku. I'm going to give you an update on it. I had to put this huge bark on there to protect their new roots. It, that's the jade one, the catlia, and then there is my biggest purpurata. And all of them are shaded uh, about 30 to 50 percent shade cloth. And of course, here's my Dracula getting covered. It stays inside the greenhouse, that's the word, um, during nights and comes here under the shade because of the heat in the greenhouse. But that's all. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.